Many Breaking Bad fans have wondered why was Gus spared and Max capped? Why did someone as brutal as Don Eladio, literally the head of the cartel, spare Gus? We all know that move came back to bite him in the end. After all, Eladio's no dummy, so he must have had a reason. Today we're going to uncover some crazy lore that the Breaking Bad universe only hinted at, but never fully explored. Also apologies to some of our longtime fans for the pretty dry upload last time. We're going to bring back some of the trademark comedy this time around. Before we begin this video, I want to go in depth and review Gus Fring's backstory before Breaking Bad. He sat Hector down and spilled some info to explain why he was torturing him. Gus was extremely poor as a child, and after a coati stole food from a tree, he grew, he tortured the animal because he thought death to it was a mercy. After that, he moved to Santiago, the capital of Chile, and formed a bond with Madrigal executive Peter Schuler, a.k.a. the Curly Fry Guy. And finally, Gus discovered a promising young chemist named Max Arcanega. In true Sugar Daddy fashion, Gus paid for Max's tuition as the two became lovers. After this, Gus probably entered the military, seeing as Hector mockingly called him Generalissimo in a flashback. After leaving Chile, he settled with Max and developed the Los Palos Hermanos restaurant chain, a front for their growing meth business. After this point, y'all know the rest of the story. Don Eladio offered to meet with him, but later capped Max because he felt slighted, and the head of the cartel somehow decided to spare Fring. So now let's talk about some reasons why this must have happened, and we're bringing you quotes straight from the source, a.k.a. the people that wrote the episode Hermanos, Sam Caitlin, and George Mastros. Remember, by the way, Gus probably erased all records of himself living in Chile on some Count Dooku shit, so he clearly has a shady pass. So on that note, this is what the writer said. Sam Caitlin, one of the writers, said, and I quote, Ella Dio spares Gus out of consideration for his reputation as a powerfully connected secret policeman in Pinochet's Chile. Maybe Eladio had dealings with other Chileans he didn't wish to alienate, but he wasn't specifically forbidden to cap him. He spared him out of respect for his reputation. I think we may have talked about the Pinochet regime falling, so that Gus has to head north on the run, and that the only thing that would scare Gus Fring would be to get sent back to Chile to suffer at the hands of the people he made suffer. Like Eichmann in Jerusalem. Something like that. Gus's journey had him land in this part of Mexico that Don Eladio did business in. And George Mastros said that first, regardless of the turf violation, Eladio respects Gus. Gus showed significant cleverness in manipulating Don Eladio into the meeting. And it shows initiative and business savvy in Gus. And as Sam says, and as suggested in the dialogue, Don Eladio did his homework on Gus and knows that Gus was a boss's or strong man in Chile. In our minds, Gus had been military or secret police, thus the meticulous folding of his clothes, punctuality, etc. Under the Pinochet dictatorship, a feared, respected man, we discussed an interrogator slash torturer, given Gus's ability to manipulate people and to deceive. Gus, in my mind anyway, might have gotten his start in drugs while in the Chilean army. For instance, one possibility with the black cocaine program, Pinochet, had his army develop a special cocaine that could be smuggled without detection, developed by the Chilean army under Pinochet's orders, and sold as a method to finance the regime. If you think about it, Gus's entire operation is organized with an almost militaristic precision. Either that, or he just played a ton of Civ V. His operation is almost airtight and is only unraveled because of Walt's chaotic nature. This man choked Arturo in a way that suggested he was used to it. Maybe he was involved in the executions of political enemies during his time in Chile. If y'all are thinking this is just a theory, Bravo Vince himself even corroborates this by saying that he had deep ties to the Pinochet government. Gus is an ice-cold guy, he threatened to go after Holly after all, and unalived his own loyal servant Victor to save his skin. But the fact that he might have been associated with some pretty messed up human rights stuff elevates his villainy to a whole other level. Gus might have honed his ability to outplay his opponents while in the military. He always has cameras near him which saved him against Walt's car plot. This guy had backup plans within backup plans. He could have been using drugs as a weapon during his time in the military and leveraged this experience after coming to the U.S. on a corporate level. It would also explain his success as a legitimate businessman. 
After all, being in the military demands insane organization and management. It's clear that Gus Fring has a pretty messed up past, but in my opinion, his backstory adds to his portrayal in both Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. And it reframes his revenge story as him possibly trying to regain the same influence he had in the Chilean military. Anyways, yeah, that's all we got for this video. Gus Fring's story is a pretty cool story about how our past can shape us but also pull us back. His death at the hands of Hector was a chilling reminder that no matter how far we come, the shadows of our former lives linger. Remember, guys, a ex-military drug lord kingpin was brought down by a chemistry teacher, a senile man, and a bell. Speaking of which, make sure to hit the bell for notifications, like, and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you in the next one.